Okay, now we're on. Hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Diaz, uh, or my YouTube channel name, Andreas the Pop Culture Guy Channel Presents. And today, we're going to discuss uh, X Men, the 2000 film directed by Brian Singer, uh, starring Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, and Ian McKellen. Today, my co host is Tommy. Tommy, say hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Andres. Yeah, no problem. It's been a pleasure. Well, this week has been uh, a special... This this is a big one. I mean, X-Men, 20 <laughs> years. 20 yeah. years. I cannot believe that. I guess. Yeah, if, yeah I, I remember seeing like trailers for and TV spots for like X2 back when I was a kid. And obviously, I wasn't into superheroes back then, so I didn't really... I was like, what is this? So, but... I can still remember, you know, those back in the day. Wow. So, and obviously now I obviously love X-Men, so. <laughs> me too. I have a question. Uh, you, you're a little bit older than me. Do you see yes. the first X-Men in theaters or? Just- no, I, 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 mean, I never saw any of the X-Men movies in theaters. I saw Spider-Man when I was in theaters when I was a kid. Was, I did become really into Spider-Man, but wow. I never saw any of the original X-Men movies in theaters. I believe the first one I ever saw in theaters was like I it it, it might have been a, it might have been Apocalypse. Like I never saw any of them in theaters. I only ever saw them on like DVD or airing on TV what? or something like that. Wait, yeah, wait. I know, I know. Wait it's crazy. Minute, wait a minute. So let me get this straight. You your first movie is Apocalypse. You no, 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 no. That wasn't my first movie. That was not my first movie. I, I watched, I, I had seen every film before Apocalypse. Like, I only either saw them on DVD or, like, when they so were airing on TV. In theaters. In theaters. Yeah, I just, never, I just never saw them in theaters when they came out. Wow. Yeah. Well, well to break the ice, I will say, <laughs> Tommy, you're not alone. I mean... <laughs> I, my first X Men film in theaters is X Men: The Last Stand. So, I, oh, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I mean, I mean, one of these days we'll discuss The Last Stand and Apocalypse yeah. because, I mean, in my opinion, I don't want to discuss too much, but like The Last Stand is better movie over Apocalypse. I, would say. I agree. Uh, I agree, but, and uh, especially it's especially better than a, another movie that attempted to recreate a certain storyline like the last stand did but we'll talk about that another time <laughs> yeah that's very true <laughs> oh my god this well folks you got the start of the x-men how insane this franchise has been for the last 20 years it's okay. had its ups and downs for sure yeah. yes yes we'll definitely discuss that um i mean so tell me just a overall opinion what do you think about this film and and especially you as a comic book fan, like, mm. like what it did for the superhero Sandra, especially that time, you know, around two thousand. Yeah. So yeah, uh, X. The I I really like the original X Men still to this day. Um, I think it is a. I mean, it granted it. There is some things about it that are pretty dated because again, it was back in two thousand, so it was twenty years ago at this point. Right. Um, but it really was substantial in comic book and superhero movies becoming what they are today because back during when this movie back in the time when this movie came out um comic book movies really weren't doing well at all like we had like back during the 70s we had the christopher reeve richard Donner superman films but they became trash by the time superman 4 had been released uh, and condemned by audiences and critics alike and the same thing happened with Batman. Like we had a huge hit with Tim Burton's original 1989 Batman and then followed by Batman Returns, which got mixed reviews. And then again, Batman Forever. I know you really like Batman Forever, but um, it was considered a huge hit, I think, uh, financial wise. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then Batman and Robin came and that just like completely tarnished <laughs> the franchise. So at the time, superhero, superhero movies really weren't doing very well. So I can imagine people were, initially skeptical about an X-Men movie being made. Um, But it, it had, but at the time it had an amazing cast, like of very A-list actors at the time and uh, really good special effects for the time as well. And uh, really stuck to the source material. Uh, So 
and it had a uh, pretty pretty good writing still by I think by the by today's standards. So I still think that the original X Men holds up for the most part and was absolutely uh, substantial in superhero movies that followed after, like the Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy or um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the Batman the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. You know things like that. Um, I believe carried over. Uh, the original X Men was one of the stepping stones towards getting superhero and comic movies where they are today. I completely agree. Um, yeah, like, it's very weird to look back on, like, the pre-X-Men and, like, the aughts era. Of yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't notice this, but, like, in the 90s, like, the thing is, like, it's very difficult to bring these characters, especially the effects that was mm-hmm. going on. And yeah. so a lot of the characters weren't able to be in the big screen due to its you know limitations yeah like it was already difficult enough to get superman done right on the big screen at the time yeah i mean the 90s like the 90s were like like i mean the 70s like superman like from the 70s to 80s there was not much comic book stuff but then i mean there were some attempts but some some of them were failures you know it seemed it was more it seemed it was more it seemed it was more so attempted on tv rather than in uh on in movies like we had the incredible hulk tv show and uh, yeah things like that yeah well and, and then you know with tv you were able to strip down some of the aspects that yes yes that the character had like i mean the incredible hulk show is very interesting but also very mm-hmm. unique and i don't think yeah. the films really capture what made the show special especially mm-hmm. the msu one but um like the 90s, I want to get into that, that part of the 90s, because the 90s, they were trying to replicate Batman. You saw, like, the pop heroes getting their own movies, like The Shadow, yeah. Rocketeer, um, mm-hmm. The Phantom. Oh, yeah, the, got, the, the, the Rocketeer, I think, is a very underrated movie. Oh, yeah, and The Mask of Sorrow. I wish people would talk more about Yes, that. I love The Mask of Sorrow. That's a fantastic movie. The Phantom, yeah. I don't know, but <laughs> you know, uh, I I really I really like the Rockets here, and I really like the Mask of Zorro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, each Pulp Heroes film are unique and special in its own way, and I want to mm-hmm. say that. And I agree with you. Uh, the best ones are Rocketeer and the Mask of Zorro. Um, and you know, you got the Crow that predate mm. like the big Ray R films. You know, and yeah. So it's independent as well, and so and. And I uh, and then lastly, and then when we get into discussion of X Men, I I don't want to forget Blade. I want yeah. to that Blade came out in 1998, the year after Batman Robin, and that was yeah, the, that's true. That's the film that gave some you know like security for Marvel to to you know sell yeah. out the right you know the studios say we look this is you know like profitable you can make this film work yeah i haven't seen blade in a long time so i can't remember if i liked it or not um the first x-men uh, the first blade film is great it's mm-hmm. it, it you know it it's not a superhero film you just yeah. have to take it as a horror action film and it's great yeah yeah as, as it should be yeah and, and that film set up the thing that you know is for the mcu mm-hmm. like taking a sandra and it and turn it into a super film like the Witcher, yeah you know like with the soldier being a critical thriller um, yeah and uh yeah guardians of the galaxy being like a space opera comedy yeah uh, exactly um x-men like show i think studios that you can make a film with so many superpower characters you know mm. because this film show a lot of different unique characters with their different abilities and it worked in this film. Yeah. You, you would, you would think that, uh, you, you would, one of the biggest worries I think you would have is like worrying that your movie would be overcrowded with like too many heroes, right. you know? Uh, but I think they managed to contain it for the most part. So I, I had to applaud them for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just very. I mean, yeah, when you get into you know the later sequels, but yeah, it, I mean, it's mostly the worst ones. The 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 best ones yeah. know how to handle characters. Yeah, so, I want to get into like for you, Tommy. What's the best aspect of the film? What's the best thing about this film for you? And, That's a tough one. Um, it would have to be a tie between. Um, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine and both 
Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen as Professor X and Magneto. Because like those, I think, are the biggest saving graces of not just the original X Men, but the original trilogy in general. Just, like despite yeah. what you, but despite that, yeah, X Men: The Last Stand is not really a good film. Um, there's still a couple of things about it that I do kind of like. Like, for instance, Hugh Jackman is still great as Wolverine. Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen are still great as Xavier and Magneto. So, like, those are, like, like they have always been, like, the biggest, like, the face of the X-Men film series. And it's going to be really hard for Marvel Studios to top that uh, oh. when they eventually integrate the X-Men into the MCU. I mean, especially after McAvoy and Fassbender, like, and yeah, like it's crazy. We have, you know, another set of good Professor X and McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. Despite like you know how they may have not been written the best, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender did a, did the I think a great job doing the best they could to emulate Stewart and McKellen. So oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and the else for best aspect of the film because I'll I'll bring mine if. If you don't have any more, uh, I think I think one thing uh, that the one specific thing I think definitely like is able to show you like the kind of like this isn't like a movie where we're effing around where we're just yeah. this is going to be a very serious film is just opening with the concentration camp with Magneto okay. as a child like I thought that was the perfect way to emulate what this movie is you know okay. it's showing like yes this is not a movie for kids this is not something you can laugh at this is we're trying to tell a serious story that both uh, that everyone of all ages most more so older people uh, can enjoy that's true, um, and I think that's a great way to say it way for my best aspect of the film. It's definitely tone. I think mm. the film did a really good job of convincing people that you know the superhero film Sandra is like legitimate and mm. can take it serious. You know, yes. I think this series did a good job, especially this film did a really good job of entering you in the world of X Men. I, I think yeah. the X Men films did a really good job of of really uh like the front society like the themes of prejudices like mm -hmm. the things you share about the x-men about prejudices and how they're not accepted in the world this film really does a really good job of that and especially yeah. it's two sequels in the original trilogy mm -hmm. and i think that you know this film feels like a magneto film like this film does a really good job of making magneto as a very centered uh sympathetic character yeah, with a background you can understand and like you can see the parallels to what they're trying to do of no that what is going on it's in almost like a real reality context and it's just in a hyper in a more heightened reality film yeah of, you know these super power beings and mm -hmm. so that's probably one of the greatest things for me is the tone and then Another aspect is definitely the casting. The casting is yeah. great. And, and I agree with you. Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, Ian McKellen are all great actors. Yeah. Um, I think this movie is definitely going to Ian McKellen because mm -hmm. his character gets the most development and you understand him from the beginning to end. Well, at the same time, I feel like that's what one of the things that drew audiences to Wolverine, like in the same way that comic book readers were drawn to him, is that you know so little about him. Yes, and like, and sure. like that's what makes him so interesting. Yes, I I was gonna get to that. I, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, well, because like it's because I want to be careful with X two. That's the thing. I feel like right. X two is the best Wolverine in an X Men film. Mm. And oh, you don't think it's Logan? Yeah. Oh no no no! I'm saying like in the X Men. Series. Oh, in the in the like main X Men series. I gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, like in terms of Hugh Jackman's performance. Okay. And, yeah. And the characters' involvement of these team up. Films. Yeah, I agree. X Two, I do believe, is a better film than the original X Men. I think it's a superior to this oh, yeah. particular film. Yeah. I mean, it's it's superior. I. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that comes later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, and you know, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine really does a great job with this. I mm -hmm. think the film really does a good job of like hitting at his his background. And yeah, you like leaving you want to learn more, and, and they did that very well in the second film. Mm -hmm. um, 
costly, it gets worse. And, and it's for so yeah. we're not going to get into that. But um, oh god, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? I like. I like the production design. Mm. Like, this film, like it, completely give you the definitive X layer cerebral and the extra. I feel like they really did a good job of adapting some aspects of the comic book um, yeah. lore from, you know, for this film. You know, I really like the X Mansion. I liked how the X layer is laid out. I really love how they went all all into that design. I really like it. It looks very futuristic, but in like in a very believable way. And mm-hmm. Cerebral is iconic. I mean, that big round room. Yeah. And it's just incredible. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the another aspect I like about the film is the production design. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. The, if, I, I do believe like the production design of the X Mansion, the X Mansion itself looks great. Um, the the uh, the X Jet is also really well done, I believe. Um, uh, th- there are there are there are obviously some things I feel are obviously outdated like the like some of the cgi obviously is like you know not as good compared to today's standards but you can't exactly blame them because that was just it was in 2000 you know yeah um and also another another thing is um there's obviously a lot of wire work involved in this movie um as 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 it was in with a lot of superhero films back then i'm spite the original spider-man uh had a lot as well so i Again, I can't exactly blame them, but it is kind of distracting when rewatching it today because it's yeah. not something you're exactly used to. It's like it's kind of like a, a thing that's either died out or has been done or is done a lot better today. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's worse in this film over the first Spider-Man film. At least the Spider-Man yeah. film looks still a little more impressive, but yeah, um, I, I can argue the CGI in Spider-Man is much worse than this movie. Ooh. Yeah, I. That's really tough for me because yeah. I think they're equally like outdated. It's just yeah. I, you know, I I think the X Men doesn't linger too much of the shots. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah, that's the thing. Spider Man absolutely does compared yeah. to X Men. So no, no, I agree. Um, well, and also I feel like the uh the for the cinematography of the first Spider Man film is not as good as this film. I feel like the sound. Mm-hmm. The cinematography of the first X Men film is a little more better than the first Spider Man film. Yeah. I I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the first Spider Man film has too much orange and like little kind of palette and I don't yeah, know. too much like trying to make it look like it's sunset all the time. <laughs> yeah, like it, it doesn't have that great cinematography that you're gonna get later with Bill Pope. Yeah, you and uh, Sp- uh, Spider Man Two and Spider Man. Yeah, 2. yeah. Um, I guess. Now we're entering in the uh, criticism. Um, what's the yeah. worst aspect of the film for you? Uh, that's a good question. Because obviously I don't think it's a perfect film, but I guess... Well, I, okay, this is, this is like more of a, this is like a, a very personal thing, but I've never really liked Halle Berry that much as an actress. <laughs> Like, I never, I've never been a huge fan of her acting. So I guess that's one criticism I can give it. Because like, yeah, she looks great as Storm, but like her acting, uh, especially with her trying to do Storm's accent, like I feel like sometimes it just makes me cringe a little bit. Mm. Um, but in terms of other criticisms, I think I guess uh, okay. Another thing is I'm not. I really like Rogue in the comics. And I feel that I feel the movies still haven't really done her that much justice. They only give her like a third of like what she's capable of in the comics. Like she has, she's so much more than just like, you know, being able to absorb, you know, people and their powers, you know? Yeah. Like Anna Paquin, like she's clearly trying, she's like doing her best, but um, I, I just wish that she could have done better. Same thing with Iceman. I think Iceman could have been a lot better in the movies. Uh, but in, in regards to, uh, oh, 
Oh, I, I think I have one more. I have one more. Uh, so, but I can't, it's not something I can exactly fault for that, them for. It's just a matter of continuity errors when it comes to the sequels and the prequels that would come later. Like, but you can say this with a lot of the films. And it's, it's like, you know, simple things like, you know, when, I think it's when Mystique is like hacking uh, in, uh, hacking in and you see like names of like other X-Men characters and yeah. like and like and like when you go into the further films like it would make no sense for the names to be in that computer system uh, but um, but i can't but i can't exactly fault them for that because when you look at something like the MCU you're looking at something that like three two or three people planned like all beforehand whereas with this it was like you know they were focusing on just making a single movie and like possibly making sequels if it was successful so i can't exactly fault Brian Singer or uh, David Hayter or any of the people involved in Fox and Marvel Entertainment for doing that, you know. Yeah, and also, folks, this is this is how franchise were at the time before that. Yes, I mean, this is the perfect example how, like, this is how the James Bond films really operate. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is how the '90s Batman films were. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. their continuity were way off. Oh, um, exactly. Billy, yeah, this is yeah. Uh, Harvey Harvey Dent going from Billy D. Williams to Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, even the Superman films were like this. And like, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, especially you know, we know we have a cut of Superman two. And yes, like, yes, and the, the the superior cut. <laughs> yeah. Yes, correct. I think you're right. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, you know, um, yeah. Um, I guess let me get into my stuff. Um, okay. I will say it. It correlates you you're saying about continuity or stuff like that. For me, this film, you know, if you are a big X Men film, uh, X Men fan, I'm sorry, uh, if yeah. you are a big X Men fan, I just want to warn you: just keep your expectations low for certain characters you like. I mean, yeah, like, especially me. I when I, like now, I like wow. I'm surprised so much. Like this, this real fan. I mean, the MCU does it, but like at least the MCU like change stuff that makes sense in their universe here mm-hmm. it's like they just they hear the name and then they just take them and they just that's it you know yeah. like, like yeah. It, it's crazy um like it's it's crazy of the last 20 years like we haven't gotten like a proper savvy two versus ring uh, yeah relationship like it's weird how this film you you see them here you think they're setting them up especially in or enter in x2 we also haven't gotten a good gambit i, I know and it's so weird that we haven't have a gambit in any yeah. of the gambit's like one of my favorites me too he's my number one favorite yeah i, lo- I love him <laughs> I, I i just don't get it it's just yeah. weird how the you know how these popular characters and stuff. yeah yeah it feels like <sighs> I, I feel like a lot of that has to be attributed to Simon Kinberg, though, because, like, he, he's obviously become, like, at the time, he, like, over time became the people that Fox relied on for their for their Mar- Marvel uh, character information. But uh, he's he's not really the best, <laughs> you know? He's... Uh, like, another thing that came across, that comes across to me for Simon Kinberg is it feels like he feels like because he's knowledgeable of these characters and because Fox has the rights, he's treats it like they're his characters, you know, right. like that's just, that's the kind of vibe he kind of gives off to me. It, it's, I feel the, very similar about Avi Arad, but, um, <laughs> oh dear, but, I... that, but Avi Arad is a completely different story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, if we talk about Spider-Man, I mean, we can go on for that character. Oh, we can go, we can go on for days about how Avi Arad is responsible for so many of the stupid decisions before Marvel yeah. Studios took over. Yeah. Well, okay. I I mean, the big thing for me, I I will say that the X-Men films are way better than the 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 original Spider-Man trilogy so far. Mm. The Spider-Man franchise for me. Oh. oh I, I I just I I agree with you about you know, Simon Kimberg in some aspect, but at least he's trying to make a movie movie, you know? Yeah. Like, and trying, you know, like, like, you know, I mean, these are the versions he wrote, and I mean, the vision that he took from First Class to, you know, unfortunately, yeah. Dark Phoenix. I mean, yes, you can, <laughs> look, you have to agree and disagree how they do it, and you know, it's... Yeah, and he directed that movie. Ugh. I know, I'm, I'm surprised he did that, but I mean, yeah. look, I mean, he did a 
confident job of directing that film. But yeah. I, story wise, I I don't know where it's. But like, <laughs> I mean, like you know, it's it's just you have to realize that this is how the franchise will be. You know, it's not going to be mo- the MCU where they take care of their characters and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I feel like I want to iterate that that you know, there's you know, produce there's so many hands in the wheel sometimes of these productions and these movies mm-hmm. and X-Men totally has that. I mean, you got uh, Tom DeCinito, this original producer for the first and second film. And also he wrote the first story here. He, he, he's going to, going to produce the Transformer films. <laughs> all yeah. five. And, you know, it, and then of course, Brian Singer was here for the first and second film. And then he leaves. And then it, it's just so many hands on of the control. And then of course, Tom Rothman was another. Oh. We had to mention, you know, he's another problem that cost X Men: The Last Stand and Origins Wolverine. Um, it just and the, and we and us almost not getting a Deadpool movie. Yeah, exactly. I I'm not, I was surprised to hear that. Um, but I mean, I I think it just all comes down when they got the right story, then we get a great film. Yeah. If, you know, if they rush it, then we're not in a good position of having a good film. Um, I, you know, when we get into in depth with the X-Men films, we'll discuss more of that. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, of the areas, you know, the errors and problems that, you know, affect the film's quality. Mm-hmm. Um, but another problem I have with this, the, the worst aspect of this film is also, um, you know, just the way they took the characters and, like you mentioned, Storm, uh, Halle Berry. I, for me, I think Halle Berry can be a good actress. Mm. It's just that they don't give her very interesting stuff in this film. And the <laughs> accent, yeah, I mean, you're right. The accent is a little too hard for her to do. Um, yeah. I, I just, especially in the sequels, I just, for me, she doesn't have the gravitas or like, or the little aspects I love about Storm in the cartoon. Like yeah. I, I forgot. I don't know. Like sorry, I remember now that she's has this like claustrophobic fear, mm. you know, and that's such a strong like thing with Storm, and they don't do that here. Yeah, and and then yeah, it, it sometimes feels like they have just like a very basic understanding of the characters, but not a not 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 too much. You know, it's like yeah. very. It's like a lot of times it feels like surface level oh yes especially with saber tooth i feel oh like yeah definitely I, I think saber tooth is the worst one here because of um like the like especially if you're a wolverine fan. yeah he, he's he's just a he's just a a, a mindless thug in this movie essentially yeah. exactly um but i think we can, we should go into like your best character in the film besides Wolverine. Let's let's let's. Say that. Oh okay okay besides Wolverine. Yeah, who's your best character in the film that you like the most? Uh, probably Xavier. I mean Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. just does such an incredible job as Charles Xavier, and uh, he just brings he's like he's a lot like the heart of the of the original trilogy, and. Uh, Yes. I feel she. I feel he always brought a lot to the table with his performances, as the even as the films went on. Oh yes, uh, especially Days of Future Past and Logan. I yeah. Know. Oh my God, Logan! Like breaks my heart. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, just a quick story for Logan. When he gets stabbed in Logan, I was like, "This is not true." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I, I, yeah." I had to. That was my reason to rewatch Logan in the theaters. I was like, "I need to see it again." But yeah. there's another thing in Logan that I was like, wait, they did not do that. It, it was just funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. What other, uh, that, that's your best character in the film? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, my best character in the film is McNeil. I, I think, mm. you know, yeah. there's no doubt that Ian McKellen is McNeil. I love him in this film. He's really great. Um, I like his costume. It's really, really good. And, um, I feel like he gives the gravitas. He, he gives like a great Shakespearean performance, but like mm-hmm. it's ground. So that's that's the thing when you hire like a, a stage actor yes. to yes. portray someone on film. Like they always like try to give it their all in their own flair, 
you know. Yes, and I think it really you can really see that with McCallan's performance as McNeil. I love his quick, you know, quirks he does. You know, like uh, you know when Senator Kelly is like mutated. You know, he was trying to escape, and he was like Senator. I was, what was the word where he was like no one will believe you you're one of us or something like that yeah he has that little smirk it when he pulls out pulls out uh pulls himself out in the window uh it's really great and then of course when he meets Wolverine again he said like oh you're uh how would he say it like oh you're uh wait what did he say uh I'm trying to remember can't yeah i i know i, I know the part i know the part you're talking about but in the train when he, he, he when he first encounters uh wolverine he's like oh you might be wolverine and then yeah he stops and is like you know it's just funny yeah 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 uh, it, it's very funny um but what else he does this is kind of cool um yeah and 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 then this film does a really good job of showing how my new powers are I, it's very impressive how mm-hmm. they show you how he does it and you know even the big set pieces but also the small stuff like my favorite one is like when he's trying to inject the sedative to rogue it's very cool to see how the the neo goes fly yeah uh, of course her neck is a pretty impressive effect um yeah uh mckinley's great he's really yes. amazing and he's great in x2 mm-hmm. and uh you know he's great in x men days of future past so it was great mm-hmm. to see him again um uh what else um yeah um i guess at the death um <laughs> what's the worst character in the film for you besides the one? I... uh i don't know uh it's probably just it, it you know it, it probably it just ends up coming down to just the people that don't really get meant much or any development at all people like toad or saber tooth like there's just the people that are just there because to be uh you know the 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 henchman of the villain but they don't really get any establishment or development of their own just like oh that's their name and oh yeah they look kind of like they do in the comics but that's it yeah they're, they're just there for the fight scenes you know yeah um i agree with i mean i mean it was it was cool to see ray park as toad the guy that played darth maul yeah but uh but other than that it's you know that it just feels like you know they there could be like some uh development with them but i understand there's like they only have so so uh little time to develop all these characters and they have to like you know give some more than others but yeah. that's probably that's probably my that, that's probably where i would click categorize my least favorite character yeah um i mean yeah i mean discussion with characters i think the film does enough good job of you know handling characters but also like making them more unique and interesting from their combo counterparts i feel mm-hmm. like that with told the most i like this version of told than the complex versions mm. um i mean he doesn't have to be deaf i like his you know a little more like like sarcastic tone and yeah and the way they use his abilities are very impressive um, you know, the I mean, when you come to most of this point, characters has to be servitude of like yeah. not setting him up as Wolverine's, um, you know, Amity and rival, mm-hmm. um, and then Storm. And, 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 it, and it makes even less sense when you cut, get to like Origins, where they like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I won't get into it, but like, yeah. Well, and I don't feel like that's the same character for this film. I, 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 I consider um, Lee Shriver's character to be different because... Oh, yeah. He, I mean, it's kind of like the Emma Frost thing. People... Think, yeah. Like, you know, like, I don't like, I, I, when we get into some of the kind of movie, like, I have this beef with some people. Like, look, it was clear, like, the Emma in x Origin Wolverine is not Amber Frost. It's just, it's, um, is Emma Super Fox? That's her sister. They combine Emma Frost's character into that. Yeah, like, didn't like, didn't like Quicksilver also have a kind of cameo in Origins, but it was a different actor than Evan Peters. Yeah, I mean, cause he well, I don't think that's supposed to be Quicksilver. I okay for me, that's like, you know, like because he was moving fast like a speedster. 
Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. Whatever. Movie sucks. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really suck. Um, uh, the, 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 let me check. Because uh, I'm okay. curious about the X-Men. Nope. It doesn't say he has a cameo at all in the original X-Men. Uh, or just Wolverine. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It, I think it's just more like fan theory that that, that is that that is Quicksilver, you know, because he's oh, okay. you know, white well, hair. Well, it's, it's obviously not now, but... Of course not. Um, yeah, it's a little weird how to... Yeah, well, it's because, like, it, they have a hard time keeping up what characters they have previously. And then the problem yeah. is going into the, the prequels, they just reuse characters. And it's like... Mm-hmm. And they, <laughs> they, they reuse characters, but just with different actors. Exactly. So, yeah, um... Yeah, um, I mean, I guess other. I guess we haven't mentioned other things. Like, what do you think about the suits? Um, I mean, yeah. So obviously, there are probably people that were like, "I want you know the the classic yellow and black suits." But it was at that period in time when, like, again, studios are really pushing for superhero movies to be taken more seriously. So they decided, like, let's make it all like mostly black so like it'll be seen as way more serious um but that's at least the vibe i got from it Uh, i think it still works honestly um i would like to see like i think the suits like the way they're presented in like x-men first class like that's like how i would want it but um but i don't i really don't mind the way that the suits look in the original in the original film or the original trilogy no 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 i i I don't know why people complain about the suits. I mean, because yeah. this I mean, came it's right... A, it's just a costume, you know? Yeah. I mean, because well, the problem was they came right after Matrix, and so, like... Yeah, that too. Leather, it, I can get that why. Um, I, I, I don't mind the X suits in these films. I like to keep the, you know, the X motif in their suits. Like... I mean, it's not X- like Cyborg in Smallville. Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> Thank goodness. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with some that, like, you know, but I think it gets more a problem in the later series where we don't get the costumes and, yeah. you know, get a promise. Like, I wish we continued with the first class and, you know, mm-hmm. my U.S. helmet. Like, uh, yeah. that's another thing this films just fail to do is give you promises and they just, ugh, just, they fail to keep that promise for you. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then, um, I, I guess the other characters. We, um, we should discuss Mystique. Uh, we think yeah. of her. Um, well, I mean, I think she works as a villain in yeah. the original film. Um, I certainly think it's better than what Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique turned into. Yeah. Uh, because I'm I'm not really the he- biggest fan of Mystique in the prequel films. Because, like, I liked her in first class, but it just feels like as it went on and on and on, like, she, they just, like, kept writing her as a hero simply because it was Jennifer Lawrence, and, like, they just forget, like, forget about the way the character is supposed to be, like, let's just have her be a hero, Mm -hmm. because this actress was in the Hunger Games. And, (laughs) and, And also, like, Jennifer Lawrence, like, made it clear, like, she doesn't, like she ended, she started to not like doing those movies. Yet they kept keeping her on until it died. Yeah. So, um, I mean, for me, if they kept the consistent of the quality of the films they have, the first class and Days of Future Past, mm-hmm. I don't think she could have been saying that. I feel like because the first two prequel films did a really good job of making Mystique a very more complex character. Like mm-hmm. from the comics, but when we enter in Apocalypse, my big issue is that they went such a one eighty degree, not only her but McNeil and some of the characters that we yeah. that we pick off in Days of Future Past, and yeah. that was the most frustrating thing. And uh, and Mystique, that another problem with them is just again they cannot keep their promises to the next film. And yeah, well, it's because like they don't have. It feels like. It felt like, for the most part, they didn't have like a, a like just like a group of people just like mapping out a narrative, you know. 
yeah. it felt like in some ways they were making it up as they go in terms of continuity and different entries in the franchise. Which just, it's just frustrating because, yeah. like, uh, okay, I don't need this very statistic long term plan. You just, just make a good film. I don't care. Yeah. Those other aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, like, James Bond has that, like, Skyfall. Yeah. I feel like that, but it's such a good film. I, I don't know. I, I feel like, well, and they try too hard to become like the MCU, and the problem is they're not the MCU. Not at all. Fox isn't nearly as, like, because Fo- because the thing is, the difference between Marvel Studios and Fox is Fox, one, is not run by, was run by Rupert Murdoch. Uh, and so, like, like, the thing with, uh, but, like, Fox does all kinds of movies. Marvel Studios focuses on just Marvel projects. So they're dedicated. They're focused on just that. And they focus on not just uh, doing their characters and their source material justice, but making good movies. Fox is, you know, I mean, yes, Marvel Studios is part of a corporation, but they are a film studio. Fox is a corporation. Their main goal is in the, uh, you know, hate to be real, hate to be real, but in the end, their main goal is making money. Yeah. So, like, and yeah, obviously, Marvel Studios is playing. Uh, like, you know, they work for Disney and that their end goal is making money as well. But it feels like the people at Marvel Studios are like, you know, very passionate people in the film industry who also are huge Marvel fans and like want to see their characters done well on the big screen. So yeah. that's th- that's what feels like the big difference between Marvel Studios and 20th Century Fox. Oh, oh I'm sorry. So- oh, I'm sorry. 20th Century Studios now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. I completely agree with you. I mean, also, they have a, a producer that has a vision, of course. Yes, yes. You know, with Kevin Feige, you know. Oh, my God. Like, you have a shared universe, and, you know. Yeah, and, and, and not just him. There's also Louis D'Esposito. He's also, like, one of the big brains. It's oh, not yeah. just, then, yeah. And then Victoria. Um, oh, yeah, what's her last name? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah. I'll look it up. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, they did a really good job of keeping... 11 years of continuity and consistency yes. very well. And I mean, Fox, Victoria Alonso, that's her name. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they, those three really did a good job of just making this universe work. Yes. And, you know, yes, there were rough patches, but they were not as rough as like, not as rough as X-Men or Spider-Man. I, yeah. I mean, even the DCU, you know? Oh small. yeah. Even in that. Yeah. You know, and I feel like, I mean, it's just crazy, you know, that 11 years they made such a big empire and just, you know, turned unknown characters into popular ones, you know? Oh, yeah. And like, I like, it's hard to like go into like a pop culture like store or anything like that and not see like something that's like Guardians of the Galaxy or Black Panther or like characters that you wouldn't even know people knew about like a few years ago. Yeah. I know, it's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, and and like, does does people know like Gamut is still popular and you know? I mean, it's like he, he's like you don't see him in like stores or anything like or on T-shirts or anything. Uh, if you're going to like a mainstream store, so I'm hoping I'm really I I have my fingers crossed that Marvel Studios will put him in a movie and like he'll become another household name like the rest of the characters they've introduced to the mainstream yeah. audiences. Yeah, I wish yeah, that's the yeah, that's the one thing. Uh yeah, other characters need to get better um portrayals like Oh, Cyclops the- especially. Oh, yes, we haven't talked about Cyclops. Yeah, we, yeah, we haven't talked about Cyclops. Yeah, he's not very good <laughs> in any of the movies. <laughs> Like no offense to James Marsters or I don't know I don't know the name of the actor who plays him in Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, but yeah, um, the, but he he's not done very well. He's not done to the full capabilities that he's supposed to be in the comics. No, yeah, uh, well, and and they misunderstood the character of of Scott. Like I, mm-hmm. yeah, Scott Scott is a little weird as a character. Um, he's a very trouble character in the comics. So. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very uh, ambiguous character, but unfortunately, people just see him as the the goody two shoe. Yeah, well, he's supposed to be like the leader kind of character. Yeah, and we don't. He's not. They they give that to like 
they they get they make him like this pompous ass, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a little weird. Um, I mean, we should discuss the other X Men characters like Jean, uh, Jean Grey as well. What do you think about her in this film? I mean, like, uh, I mean, I think Famke Jensen does a pretty decent job at her. Um, I mean, I can't really compare her to Sophie Turner because Sophie Turner barely got. Like, even in Dark Phoenix, I feel like she was underused. You know, she wasn't given a whole lot to work with. Yeah. But I feel like in the first two films, uh, that version of Jean Grey is much better. Like, it feels oh, like there is some develop. It feels like there is quite a bit of development with her in the first two films. Yeah, and also setting her up to be the Dark Phoenix, of course. And yes, yes. Which, compared to Sophie Tanner, that didn't... Like, well, like, like the weird thing is... They introduce her again, and then already they teasing the Phoenix, and then the next film is Dark Phoenix, and they retcon the tease they did in Apocalypse. Like that was such yeah. a weird, like such a bizarre way they did in the prequels. And yeah, I I feel like the best thing, like I mean, if we're getting into the the other things, like like the thing is where these films did a good job of setting up their films and this original trilogy where the prequels like did not really set up stuff they they could have done and a they, lot uh, yeah a lot of times it felt like they were just rights retainer movies yeah like movies that they a lot like you know how like fox treated the fantastic four where a lot of times they didn't care about the fantastic four but they wanted to keep the rights because they knew yeah. that if they if they if the rights re- reverted back to marvel they would turn into another blockbuster hit blockbuster franchise yeah so mm. if you it, it, like maybe not it may not have been like as careless as Fan- the fantastic four films but oh um okay. but uh it did feel like sometimes they didn't put as the as the fil- films went on and on. They put less and less effort, if that makes yeah. any sense. Well, and I feel like you know there were too many hands in the cook of the kitchen you know, these films. The, those prequels, like Matthew Vaughn was involved with First Class, and then a little mm-hmm. bit in Days of Future Past, but then he left to do Kingsman, and then Simon Pinker and uh, Simon Pink uh, Kimberg and. Brian Sneaker took over for Apocalypse and they were yeah. completely in control of that, but then that didn't end up didn't work. And then mm-hmm. Phoenix, it was just all Simon Kimberg and uh Hash Parker and and that's it. And it's like, oh well. So it's, it's just Yeah, very industry uh, control. I mean and I mean like first class there was like a direction that I think Bond wanted to go to, but then like if if you didn't hear what Bond say, you know, he had like a long yeah. term. But then, that, seems, that seems to be a big problem throughout the entire series is like the studio not agreeing with the the filmmaker. Yeah. I mean, or, it's, it's not the first time Fox has done this. The Alien franchise is a big example. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alien 3, I know that. And, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, these are not as bad as Alien 3 was. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, I... <sighs> I mean, Alien Three isn't isn't that bad. It's Alien Resurrection that's garbage. Oh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I mean, Alien Resurrection is just a studio community. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, it was like, okay, we want another one, and yeah, <laughs> it was like a studio mandate film, and yeah, it was just it wasn't like the first three films. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess let's go into like, I mean, like. You want to hear trivia and facts about this film? Yeah, go ahead. So, so there's a lot of writers in this first film. Yes. And the big one I know was Josh Whedon. And yeah. Somehow he is in this film. I mean, he was initially wrote two drafts, and then apparently they didn't like it because it was too much like pop culture references and stuff like that. Um, Sounds like him. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, I do want to mention about, you know, some of the best stuff that Brian Zager and Josh Green are in right now. Mm-hmm. I do not give them credit for these films and mm-hmm. or, or Josh Green at the Avengers films. Mm. So um, I feel like the writers of Debbie here 
uh, did a really good job of making the film work. Uh, David Hayter's a good writer. He's also, uh, he was also the voice, uh, in case you don't know, he was the voice of Solid Snake in the Metal Gear uh, video game franchise. So that's another thing he's known for. Oh, and yeah. he's the voice of King Shark in The Flash. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, it, there was an ep- I don't know if you've been keeping up with The Flash, but during season five, I believe it was, there was an episode where King Shark was had his powers taken away and i was telling me please be david Hayter, please be david Hayter." <laughs> but it wasn't david Hayter; it was a different actor when he was oh, a wow. human <laughs> i was like damn it <laughs> yes uh, it was for the king shark versus uh Gritic rock right yes uh, yes that was the episode i believe um okay what else that was interesting yeah they have a lot of changes of the script you know like uh uh michael there was another one that there was a six page film treatment in Fox in nineteen ninety six that had between Wolverine and Jubilee. And mm-hmm. honestly, they transferred Jubilee's personality and stuff like that into rogues. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. Um it's weird they didn't put Jubilee as the main character of this film. So like, yeah, is. has she been in any of the Oh, she was in Apocalypse, but she didn't do anything. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and she was in X two. She's the well, her her scenes were deleted, but like she's oh. next to. Uh, if you see her, she's an Asian girl, and you see her hands kind of electrify a little bit. And oh, that's you see right. Towards the end of the film, at when yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's weird. It's kind of like Kitty Pry when she has cameos, but like it didn't like came to fruition. So mm-hmm. it's, it's very interesting. Um, but yeah, well, and also Fox. The, the budget of this film, like, it's crazy to look at the budget, but the budget here is, like, $75 billion to make Really? It. Yeah. It's not 100 or 140 like, uh, Spider-Man. That's crazy. Yeah, so they really, Fox were very cost-concerned uh, for this film. Mm-hmm. They wanted to either be 60 or $75 billion. That's why you see a lot of the effects a little outdated, mm-hmm. and, like, they were very like this film feels more like a TV pilot more mm. than a film like X two because like X two from seventy five X two is one hundred and ten billion dollars to make yeah. much bigger and a lot better to look at you know and and with the seventy five million dollars they had to cut out some certain characters like Beast um uh and Nightcrawler were deleted yeah. Over- budget concerns so from fox yeah and it does feel weird to like have uh, an entry x-men film and not have beast involved yeah for me but that's why i love like this is why i have a guilty pleasure for x-men the last stand because like, yeah yeah beast it, it, i will agree is like one of the few really good things about uh last stand yeah i love kaiser Graham. he's great i was so happy he had cameo on days future past um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I was kind of sad not to see an older Beast. Ugh, you got it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like Nick. I like Nicholas Holt as an actor, but he's not. Yeah, he's not the best Beast. No. No, I mean, and they. I mean, ugh, I hate that when Kimber got involved, he just completely just didn't make it properly comic book faithful Beast. It's like he's just like yeah. he's more like. A, the Hulk, then the Hulk. <laughs> like, it's weird. Um, okay, let's kind of enter in of, what do you think about the legacy of the film? What do you think will, like, what, what do you think about the legacy of this film will be for people? <coughs> well, um, like I said before, it was one of the big uh, influences on superhero movies leading to where we are today. Like, we would we wouldn't have a Marvel Cinematic Universe if it wasn't for this movie. No. So uh, I, so you obviously have to give the film credit for that, despite however you may think of it today, like you can't deny that it had a major impact on the way the public uh, mainstream movie going audiences perceive superhero movies. And yeah, and yeah, it was in, it was the, the superhero movies were still in sort of a dark age because yeah, we did get X-Men and Spider-Man, but we also got, daredevil and ghost rider so it was it was still not the greatest time um i mean for 
I mean, entry from X Men, Spider Man. It was like a learning process. Oh yeah, like absolutely. How you can take X Men and Spider Man's successful formula, you know? Yeah. And I don't think we got there until um, Iron Man and Dark Knight, where we kind yeah. of got better with it. But we got some really like weird results of successful films. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I never expect, like, how you say, Deadpool to be the biggest X Men film and be <laughs> literally the highest one out of the, the main. It, it, if Deadpool beat a movie that had Batman and Superman in it. <laughs> yes. And, like, we haven't had a successful Fantastic Four film. Like, nope. we haven't had, like, a successful Sp- uh, Superman film. Like, no. it's very weird how. Oh, didn't Man of Steel do well financially? Uh, who? Man of Steel. Um, well, it it did, but it didn't do, like, I say, like, it, it's kind of weird with Man of Steel. Like, mm-hmm. it did perform better over Superman Returns. It made over yeah. $660 million, if I remember correctly, over yeah. the three hundred uh, the three hundred and ninety one million that Superman Returns made in, in 2006. Mm-hmm. The problem was, it was over budget. It was 225 to make. And so, obviously... It didn't break even, and then yeah. also it was very divided and very just. Yeah, it wasn't. I think Warner's like to be like Batman Begins, like it was perfectly mm-hmm. praised. It was was both loved by the critics and the audience when it came out. I, I feel like yeah. that was it for Man of Steel. Yeah, so, of I actually I actually do like Man of Steel. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a perfect film, but I do enjoy it. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I, I don't I I say I don't hate it. I'm no. right in the middle. I enjoy some parts of it. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like there's things they can execute it better, but yeah. You know, and I also I don't mind General Saad being killed. That's not my mind. Uh, yeah, I did I didn't have a problem with that either. Yeah, so I'm not one of those people. I, I just in general I think it's a good average super film that mm-hmm. just some of the ideas and like at the time I could see I could have when I saw the movie when I saw Man of Steel for the first time in theaters, I was like, yeah, I can definitely see a DC cinematic universe spawning from this. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 like, I didn't think it would become what it is now, but cause I, cause, head. cause I, cause I wasn't as big a DC fan back then as I am now. Like I'm a huge, I'm re I'm a really, really big DC guy now. So really? I understand, I understand really? things like the, I understand things like the multiverse and like the different types of characters. Like, you know, you got the, Suit powered characters, the magic characters, the really weird ones, like you know. So like, I didn't fully understand DC back then. Like, I was it, was it was just like it was just like all Batman and nothing else <laughs> back when Man of Steel came out for me. I wasn't a huge Superman fan back then, but I really like Superman now. Okay, that's very cool. I I have the same thing. I was a Batman fan. I'm still like Batman is still my favorite character for DC. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't too. a Marvel guy until Iron Man came out, and that yeah. made me into a Marvel fan. I only I only liked Spider Man. I didn't really care about everything else in the Marvel universe until the MCU started to become a thing. I was like, okay, the, clearly yeah. I'm missing something, and so yeah. I went. Yeah, same here with you. That's what happened to me when I love Iron Man. That's how I went. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and of course you went you went to the impact of the superhero film genre. Uh, for me, it, it definitely just gave us the right the right track mm-hmm. what you need to do for a super a superhero film take the material seriously try to you know like keep the answer of what made it special mm-hmm. that's how spider-man was successful i mean this is how batman begins was successful yes where, you know and that's what that's where the mcu when the first iron man came out that's when it really became successful because mm-hmm. the ones that didn't weren't, weren't successful like Daredevil or the Hulk or or I mean uh, what Ghost Rider Ghost Rider yeah that, that was another one um, and then yeah for Tax and Ford because they lack something in, some of them was okay they got the idea but they didn't mm-hmm. get the answers of the characters they, they, were, they went too radical changing their characters and yeah like that um so it took a while for I think for studios to allow someone to understand what needs to be. I mean, Kevin Feige started from this film. Uh, yes, I, yes, I, that's I right. 
I do want to mention that in terms of the legacy of the film and its impact with the film Sandra, this started Kevin Feige's like leeway into the Marvel enterprise, the whole yeah. enterprise. He is an executive producer. Um, Lauder Schurdonner has mentioned in a couple of the behind the scenes um, interviews and, and, and you know, uh, blogs, stuff like that, that, he, you know, she had an intern and so she hired Kevin Feige of his knowledge of the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. so without, if you look at some of the key aspects of like, you know, maybe Wolverine's hair or, you know, like the, the thematics of some characters that mm -hmm. were successful in these films were probably Feige's. So yeah. That, and so if you look at how the MCU were, he pretty much learned how, like, if, if you look at Fan Forstick, because I, I, if you see how Fan Forstick and Ant-Man were in the same year in 2015, right? If you tell me how Ant-Man was going to be the better film, because that film had <laughs> major trouble productions. Yeah. It winding up being okay film it did yeah. well box office where fan forestick suffer from the consequences of not having a strong director that had a very bizarre vision um, and stuff like that that's putting it mildly <laughs> exactly um everyone go check the midnight edge videos of john Franken. yes forestick. yes definitely and, and it's a wild story and he's just really bizarre um and you see how feige just knew how to handle that situation and mm -hmm. like, it just so yeah i actually i i like it man i think it's a good film i mean i know it like yeah you're right it had a lot of production issues but i think the final product i think it's really enjoyable exactly exactly that that's all i need to ask just give me a yeah little, right and it, the same thing happened with solo like i like solo had a lot of production problems i thought oh my god this is gonna be trash yeah. but i actually enjoyed solo yeah um i think disney did a good job of i, I think disney do a better job of reshoots than I yeah. think other studios. I kind of noticed that. I'm I'm trying to think what other film that did okay. Like one more season, another one I think that did a good job of telling their trouble production and tried to fix it. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's all opinion, you know. But um but yeah, I mean like like if you look at how these films like really went, you see how Fly took the MCU, it's like I think X Men needed a clear producer vision because Laura Sher Donner and Ralph Winter, um, the originals, just like like they were doing the you know the very traditional franchise method, but then mm -hmm. when we entered more of the like spinoffs and prequels, that's where we got more complicated and that's where we got just more inconsistent. I feel yeah. like and more power like less thing we when, when you want. The piece of the pie they want to they want to be part of that you know that's yeah. that's why sam drinker took over you know because mm -hmm. you know stuff like that um okay and then yeah it's very interesting um you know and uh, and you know we, and, and there's another producer called hatch parker he entered in the wolverine and you know he's another producer that becomes more prominent in the clear franchise mm -hmm. Um, and then Ryan Reynolds becomes the producer for his films, and oh, thank God! Yeah, thank God. So, <laughs> um, I, I guess for one last thing, two more last things. Um, okay. Do you want to rank the film? To, oh, rank the film? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was actually thinking about this. So I think the way I would rank it is I would put above it uh, X two, first class. Okay. Uh, Days of Future Past, both of the dead, like not in any particular order. By the way, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just listing the films I would put above it. I put uh, X2 First Class, okay. Days of Future Past, both of the Deadpool films, and Logan above it, and mm -hmm. everything else below it. So Last Stand, Origins, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix. Ooh. I think I listed everything. <laughs> okay, let me list my stuff here. I'm gonna put the last one. So for we got twelve films, right? So number I believe 12, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, because thirteen is the new bands, right? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about that film. That poor, that poor, that poor movie. It'll oh never be released. <laughs> it just won't be released. Fingers crossed for it being released next month. 
I don't know. Yes. We'll see what happens. I hope so for me because I want to go back to the beers and see Tenant for God's sake. <laughs> oh God. Um, so for my ranking, I put 12 X Mormon Drew's Wolverine. That's the worst mm-hmm. one for me. Mm. It's, it's so bad. I, I'm i so disgusted at how they handled the origin <laughs> and just completely just like just graded X2. So X Men Origins Wolverine or it's number last in my list as 12th worst film. And then 11, I put X Men Apocalypse. I feel like for me, because the younger prequel class are my X Men. I grew up watching. I haven't. I didn't properly watch the original trilogy, and you know I have a soft spot for X Men Last Stand. But man, I was to say for X Men Apocalypse, and then they completely just just fail. They did. Yeah. They just they disappoint me completely. So yeah. it's and, they, and, the, and not only that, but they tragically wasted Oscar Isaac's talent. I say I. For me, he gets what's it with the blockbuster stuff. Mm-hmm. Arthur Isaac, he's a great actor. He's a very um, great actor. And then number 10, um, I guess I will put, um, yeah, number 10, I guess I put Dark Phoenix. Okay. It's, it's a, it has similar plans as Van Forstick. It's trying to be too serious, mm-hmm. but then I just don't get why the characters are doing what but <laughs> the big difference from Fan Forest it has better production values, it has more confident director. Like there's cool scenes in this film. It's not assaulting to me. It's not like apocalypse or origins. It's just a ugh, bland kind of film. So Dark Phoenix is number ten on my ranking. And then number nine, I put X Men the last stand because mm-hmm. it's a mess of a film. I like one idea they they should have taken was the cure instead of the just adding in the Phoenix. That's another thing but Kim Burke. Like I don't know why they were trying to keep the Phoenix plot line if they were not gonna focus it at all in that film. So for me, X Men The Last Stand was my first film. I there's stuff that I like that you can like in the film. Beast the casting the casting of some characters are good. I like Beast. He's the best part of the film. Cassie Grammer is amazing. His makeup yes. is amazing as well. I enjoyed that. Then Nicholas Holt. Um, so that's number nine. And then number eight, I put the first X-Men there. Um, the first X-Men film is a great start film, mm-hmm. but it's too short. It's, you know, it's not as epic as you want from the other X-Men films, or it doesn't have just enough meat or substance do you want to have in that film. It's just an okay start of film for a franchise that's going to be much bigger and go some places. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know where they're going to go. And so, yeah, so that'd be eight. And then number seven, I put the first Deadpool. I didn't see Deadpool in theaters as well. So I didn't, because I didn't know Deadpool as well. So, yeah. So it, it's a it's a good Compton Orange film. I think it's the most small scale film we got for an X Men film that does it right. I like the performances of Ryan Reynolds. It's very passionate kind of project, and I really enjoy it. Yes. So that's number seven, and then number six, number six and five. I have a toss up. Is the okay. because like I preach I because number six I had originally the Wolverine. And then number five was Deadpool two, so. Oh, I forgot about the Wolverine in my ranking, but I'll let you finish yours first. Yeah, very quickly. Um, um, I guess, yeah, I should do. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably put Deadpool two at six, and then I'll put five the Wolverine because I watch, okay. I really watched the Wolverine multiple times recently. Yeah. Um, I so Deadpool two, I like it more than the first one because Deadpool two is my first Deadpool film. I enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. It has more of the Roger comedy. Uh, the action is you know top notch. Um, I love the new supporting characters. It's yeah. a really funny expression of the universe. And it, it, it these the, the the first two Deadpool films are the most X Men we really got in terms of comic comic book faithfulness and mm-hmm. the style. I just love it. Like comic accurate characters like Colossus and new and creative characters that I love like uh you know uh 
Teenage Warhead and, and the, you know, and yeah. the Dynamo. So those films are really great. Number five, The Wolverine. I I saw the first, uh, I saw The Wolverine in theaters one time. Um, I was like, okay, it's a better film over Origins Wolverine. Mm-hmm. But in terms of repeating Wolverine, and especially with Logan being directed by the same director, I appreciate The Wolverine more as a character uh, development for the character of Logan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great small scale film. I love it. It's not a, you know, wormhole, like battle, like high stakes kind of film. It's a very small, intimate film that goes into depth of the Wolverine character. Um, yeah, the third act goes a little too comic booky, but I don't have yeah. that problem. I don't have that problem. I think it, I think there's ways they can do it differently, but again, that's just my opinion. So number five is the Wolverine. Number four, mm-hmm. X2. Right sequel really ends up the um, scale and expansion of the universe from the first film and gives you everything what a sequel should do. So uh, the thing that kind of just doesn't put it on my high on my list is the the stuff they pay they the stuff they trying to set up doesn't get paid off well. Yeah. Of course, the Phoenix and then Wolverine's origins gets just completely muddled and destroyed. And mm-hmm. Order of Wolverine and the later prequels, unfortunately. Then number three is X Men First Class. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my favorite, like it's one of my. This is the first proper good film of X Men film I saw in theaters. <laughs> I saw X Men: The Last Stand and Wolverine Origins Wolverine in theaters, and they were the worst. Yes, yes. everyone they say, it. and it's like, ugh. Especially Origins Wolverine. I had allergies during that day. I was like, ugh. I was. Dying, I mean, I had allergies. <laughs> I remember it was raining up there that that one day. I went with my parents to see that film. Oh my god, I can't believe it! First class. When I saw first class, I was like, "Wow, this is cool." A, a alternate, <laughs> like alternate thriller, nineteen sixty film. I was like, I was digging it. And then towards the end, when you saw my Neil's classic helmet, I was like, "Oh my god, they did it." <laughs> <laughs> it was like way better than what the Marvel Studios do. The reason I like the Marvel Studios is they did that accurate complex character costumes. You yeah. know, Iron Man, Captain America, they were good. But when I saw Mike Neal's helmet, I was like, forget that. I'm like, and I think it's uh, first class and Days of Future Past, the best alternate. I uh, and Wonder Woman, the best alternate like um, history superhero films and yeah, the history of, uh, film. Um, series over the MCU because the MCU don't really try creatively the, the alternate histories. I mm-hmm. it's just that's my opinion. But X Men First Class is great. It X Men First Class is a great Magneto film. It really expands the character more. It gives you more in depth of who Magneto was and how he became Magneto. They did such a good job with that. Gives you why you like Michael Fassbender as an actor. Really incredible film, a great villain. I love Sebastian Shaw. This film, I love this version of the Hellfire Club. Yeah, Kevin Bacon is amazing, and so it's number three in my X Men ranking. And then number two, Logan. Um, mm. Logan is the best X Men film. It's one of the best Wolverine films. What else I gotta say? It's one of the best like Ray Art films of superhero. Yeah, uh, films, and I love it. Hugh Jackman is a great character. Uh, Hugh Jackman is a great actor playing this character. It's really sad that he's leaving. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, he, he left the role, but I think it was a great uh, swan song. I think James Mangle really did a great job with this film. He felt controlled this time around. He had the voice. I felt his voice in this film, and I think he did a, such a major job. I was happy to see 4V Friday. Another great film, guys. Check that out. <laughs> um, uh, and this film made me appreciate his filmography. So I've seen a couple of his films, and he's a great director. Um, yeah, and great final performance for Patrick Stewart as Professor X. But it's number number one. Um, number one is X Men: Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite films of superhero films of all time. My personal favorite of the X Men, but also superhero films in general. Number one. It's amazing. It's I love how they combine both casts. It's a proper third final film for the older cast. Finally, it. Uh, also, as a personal thing for me, it actually got me into YouTube. It got, actually took me in a more stable career choice. 
um, because of I used the the quick server on you know the prison break they did. Yeah, I put that sign and it became a huge hit in my channel, and so I continue ever since. And that this film uh, is a personal uh, thing for me, and so I want to thank this film so much of <laughs> keeping me in the editing uh, square uh, area. So I really love X Men Days of Scratch. It's tight. It's two hours, you know, good, you know, 131 minutes. That's a good length for a film. It's emotional. It's deep, but it's fun. It has a great way of using time travel uh, ever, I see in the film. Uh, better. It's way better over Endgame. I just feel like Endgame just. Wow. Because <laughs> Endgame was joking about time travel. I was like, why are you joking about time travel? Like, <laughs> There's other films that did time travel, and they, that really just, I didn't, like, why? They just, they keep, like, this film, x Days Fest never comment on the time travel device or anything like that. They just, they give you the rules, and it's like, here we go, and that's it. And mm -hmm. they took a series, where Endgame was just like, was just like, oh, yes, we know it's going to be complicated, and et cetera, et cetera. I know that. Central is a fictional thing. It's not going to be perfect. I understand that. So I think as my dates reach press a better end game over adventures end game. I'm sorry, folks. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's my opinion. So, well, okay. Well, if I want to be more detailed on my rankings of the X-Men films, yeah. uh, I'm going to be uh, forthright. So at the bottom, I'm going to put Dark Phoenix. Uh, okay. <laughs> because I think that movie is just a goddamn mess and uh, from the get-go. Yeah. And... Uh, was a horrible send off for the main series of X Men films, and then above it, and then and then like right above it, like you know, the both these films are I think are equally terrible. But then, and then right above it would I would put X Men Origins Wolverine because that film mm -hmm. is hot garbage. Like I I really don't know what they were thinking. Like every time I see like any bit of footage from it, I'm thinking like people people made this, they made this, and put it out into the world knowingly. Like okay, and then, and then after that, I would put. X Men: The Last Stand. It's not a. I don't wouldn't consider it a good movie, but I don't think it's horrible. Oh wait, no. What am I saying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forget I said that. Above X Men: Origins Wolverine, I put X Men: Apocalypse mm. because that film, what I feel was not good. It was a really bad continuation from an amazing film, which was X Men: Days of Future Past, and just like completely ruined people's expectations for where the franchise was going to go after that movie. Uh, then after that, I would put. X-Men The Last Stand because yes, I don't think it's a good, really a good movie, but I don't think it's a bad, really, a really bad movie either. I think it's just not the best. Um, yeah. And also, when, uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, what's up? I do not like this film. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a okay film, but just, yeah. just not execute ideas, folks. And we don't, we do not support Brett Rather either. He's yeah, no. Right, so we're just saying it's all, it's Less painful than the other films. Yeah. Yeah, no, Brett Ratner can uh, go to hell. But, uh, so, okay, so after, uh, where was I? Last Stand, right? Yes. Okay, Last Stand. Then after that, I think I would put The Wolverine. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I, think it, I think The Wolverine is a good movie. Um, it, 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 it stayed true to the comics while... Uh, also being entertaining as a casual film. I think, again, Hugh Jackman is, of course, amazing as the character. And, but, and you are right. The final act like becomes very cartoony um, compared to the rest of the movie. And I think that's the reason why I don't like hold it in a huge regard. Mm. But I still think it's a good movie. I still think, like, yeah, I can watch this and enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's, that's Wolverine. And then after that, I would put... Probably Deadpool two, okay. Because I think Deadpool two, like I like I think Deadpool two was great. It was a great sequel, and uh, I think the characters in it are great. Like uh, Josh Brolin as Cable is a great choice, and he does a great job. And Ryan Reynolds have, continues to be amazing as Deadpool. And then above that, I would put uh, Deadpool one, because Deadpool one is just like a dream come true for me because I love Deadpool so much. And uh, it was like a, it was clearly like a, pa like you said, it was clearly like a passion project for Ryan Reynolds and uh, Pete, uh, the other people that were involved in that movie. I think, I just think it was a great, great movie. 
And then after that, I would put X2. Mm. Uh, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm messing up here. I'm sorry. Below, in between the Wolverine and Deadpool 2, that's where I put the original X-Men. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. The, like, like you said, it was a great, great starting, good starting point, but it was, it was too short. It has, it's a little outdated, and uh, there's some characters that I wish that were in the film that were not. And then, and then after that, Deadpool 2, then Deadpool 1. Then, then X2. I think X2 is a great sequel. I think uh, uh, Stryker is a good villain. Um, I think that it further developed Wolverine very well. And uh, it certainly had a great tease at the end, which unfortunately, like you said, didn't get followed up very well. But I still consider X2 a superior film over the original X-Men. And then after X2, uh, I would put First Class. Because, hey. yes, First Class is a very great film. It's a great prequel film. Despite, at the time, there being a continuity error with the prologue in The Last Stand. But that, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I think First Class is a great period piece. I think it is... They did a great job recasting a lot of the uh, older characters with younger actors. Um, and, yeah, I think X-Men First Class is a very entertaining film. And Matthew Vaughn did a great job. And then, after first class, I would put Days of Future Past. Okay. Uh, Days of Future Past is my number two. So, uh, like you said, Days of Future Past is probably the best of the main X-Men films. I think it is truly wonderful. You're right. It's a great time travel story. It's a great half-period piece. It does the characters very well. And manages to, and it's a it's a great like combining film of both the prequels and the uh, mainline films, and I think one of the best parts about it is the ending. I think the ending is like I was super excited at the end because I was thinking like I can finally get like excellent movies that I've always wanted. Like it left me with like a huge amount of hope for the franchise, and unfortunately, it like, before it it didn't follow up. But I still consider X Men Days of Future Past to be an amazing film. One of the much better comic book films in, of the decade. Agreed. And, and uh, the best of the mainline X-Men films. And above Days of Future Past, I would put Logan. I think Logan, Logan is hit all the right bars for me. It adapted the old man Logan series without completely adapting it. Because I'm going to be honest, I really don't like the comic books miniseries old man Logan. I think it's not very good. Oh, right. um, but I think Hugh Jackman did a fin did some of his best work as the character. I love uh, X-23 in the film. I think uh, Patrick Stewart did an amazing job as well. I love that it feels like a Western. Uh, and it's like, and it doesn't have to rely on like, you know, it didn't like, I love the Marvel Studios films, obviously, but it didn't have to rely on big CGI explosions or huge action set pieces involving like a majority of CGI. It could stay practical, it could stay with doing wire work without being too obvious. And I just love it for that. I really feel that it's, the series should have ended with that film, but unfortunately they kept going for a couple more years before finally losing the rights by being bought by uh. Disney. But I think Logan is the best, in my opinion, it, it, despite whatever I may think of new mutants, I doubt that I will like it more than Logan because I think Logan is just such a fantastic film and a perfect ending to not only the X-Men film series, but also to Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yes, I totally agree. Uh, yeah. Our last four, like lists are like kind of similar. It's just the number one and two just flip flop. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. I completely agree. Uh, Logan is an amazing film. It's such a great character driven film mm -hmm. in general and it just wraps up Wolverine as a character in that film series very well yeah and uh yeah and yeah it, it's incredible 20 years yeah it, 20 years it's incredible um I was so for conclusions um let me say it this out loud for 20 years I think the X-Men is will still be a part of film mm -hmm. no matter what happened with the director, obviously, with his problems, mm -hmm. or, you know, the inconsistent quality of the X-Men films that we got after X2. 
I would say it did a good job. The first film set us up for a much better decade, the next two decades of superhero films, mm-hmm. and gave us so many of the characters that we like, but also characters we didn't know that gave them new fandom and you know new audience. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I I think the first film does everything right as a story up film as a superhero film. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I you know wish that I can see it as a child in the theaters and see what was the reaction of seeing these characters in the big screen for the first time, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's incredible. Twenty years, and and you if you see this film and seeing the many films that came after it is incredible. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so surreal. Like this year we got, you know, the, you know, Holly Queen, the birds of prey came out and then mm-hmm. we're waiting for wonder woman in October and black widow. And like, we came such a long way, those 20 years of, yeah, oh, yeah. films, you know, and it's just incredible. So, uh, any thoughts, final thoughts, Tommy? Uh, just that, um, I love the X Men franchise, and um, despite and uh, I, I completely agree that X Men is a very important film when it comes to the evolution of superhero movies. And despite what how the ups and downs the franchise have had over the years, I still respect uh, what they did for the most part. And I'm really hopeful for how Marvel Studios will interpret this uh, franchise in the future. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, uh, hopefully MC will learn the. Well, I mean, Fagin knows what happened, and and he has a very clear vision on what the character should be. And I think yeah. he will do that same with Fantastic Four and mm-hmm. of course the X Men are favorite movements. And so, Blade. Yeah. So thank you, Tommy, for coming. Of uh, course. Please- Please stay for just two minutes. I uh, just want to talk yeah. to you a little bit. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this podcast of X-Men, the 20th anniversary talk. Uh, my co-host, uh, Tommy, and I discussed pretty much the Lexi of this film. And I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Thank you, and have a nice day. <laughs>